Let's look at this 1928 two-piece flange Granada. Great sound, great condition. Hey, if you like these videos, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get a notification. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> My picks started to fall off there, but I uh, won't uh, cause any problem with, with me describing this banjo. So what we have is a really complete 1928 two-piece flange Granada that has a very, uh, these have a very unique sound. They're probably the best buy in the market because you get that gold maple sound on a banjo that would cost probably 10 times as much or more and uh, so, it's, so it retains a lot of that sound. So looking at it you do have the clamshell Granada tailpiece which is the more desirable of the tailpieces. It says Granada on it. It has a two-piece armrest and I'll go to the side of that you can kind of see that. That is the correct arm piece for this uh, this banjo and um, then you go up the neck, and this is a Clancy Mullins neck. Clancy Mullins, great neck maker, and he made this specifically for this banjo. And then we go up the neck, and we see the headstock. And uh, this banjo has new Waverly keys on it, but it's got original pearl buttons, okay? And look at those buttons. All right. Now, what you have to remember, this was a uh, tenor banjo, so there were only four buttons, so we had to get another button somewhere. And also, you'll probably never know, but when you're tuning, you'll feel this a little rough. And this button was a little cracked, so we super glued it. And I don't think it will ever come loose. And it looks great. We didn't want to put a, a newer plastic button on it. And um, that's, that's pretty much it. So let's look at the uh, inside of the banjo. And I will tell you that it has a conversion tone ring in it. It's a Paul Hopkins ring, okay? And uh, you can look in here and you see the label. And, of course, you see the serial number, 9058-6, and you'll see that later on the resonator. But the, the important thing is, is not only is this a great tone ring, but the shell has never been cut, all right? And... Uh, well, what's the significance of that? Well, the significance is that we have the original raised head tone ring that came with this banjo. Look at that gold. I mean, it's just, it looks like King Midas's, came out of King Midas's pyramid or whatever. So, well, the significance of that is these banjos sound incredible. So this way you can get the raised head sound if you want. And a raised head granada is totally different than a, uh, a three or a four, which is uh, nickel and chrome plated respectively. And this gold does something, I can't describe it, but 
It's the sound that uh, people really want. All right, and then, uh, not that it means anything, but uh, we do have the original tenor neck with it as well. And the significance there, you can see on the neck that it has the binding, uh, and the same binding as on the five string neck. And that's kind of uh, interesting. And you see that uh, kind of thing below the fingerboard. It's much more pronounced on the new neck, but that was on the old neck. So when Clancy uh, Molland copied the neck, he made sure to not only copy that, but the binding even looks similar uh, as far as the color and everything. Okay, so that is that. So uh, beautiful, 100% original, every part. It's exactly what you want, okay? And then we look at the resonator. Once again, original finish. And I yelled out the serial number of the banjo earlier in great condition. And of course, the serial number matches 9058 dash. Actually, it might be a five. It's either a five or a six, the last number. Now, you'll notice that there's some little black, I mean, the, the hooks receivers or the uh, thumb screw receivers have this black plastic thing on them. And I was thinking, oh my God, did they replace those for some reason? No, they didn't. That's just a little uh, piece of rubber that goes over the, uh, the receiver. And I've got original receivers in there, no problem. And it just causes the, uh, the thumb screw to stay in the, uh, this hook without falling out, no vibration. In fact, if I figure out who made these, I think I'm going to order some and put them on my banjo. The only other thing is uh, lot, sometimes on these resonators, uh, pretty minor, but I have to reveal it. Uh, it's pretty solid, but sometimes the binding will either come in a little bit or this will come out, but it's real solid here. Uh, so when you feel the banjo, you'll feel that this wood is not quite even in this uh in this area from the uh, the binding, okay? And once again, that's something that you find in uh, older resonators sometimes. Uh, and I, it's kind of thing, you, it, unless you really look carefully, you probably would never notice it, but you'll see it in this resonator. It's totally solid. Um, and just so you know this, that the walls of this, uh, all resonators are poplar, so the only thing that the uh, outside of the resonator is is a uh, thin layer of veneer, okay? So let me do another close-up of that because I this is really a nice banjo. I just want you to see you can hardly, it's hardly seeing. It's just coming out just a little bit, and I don't know if some miracle repairman could make it look perfect, but it's just part of the character of the banjo. And whenever you get a banjo that's this complete and has been uh, next been built by a professional, it's just a great instrument. So that's it. So if you have any questions or want to see more pictures of the banjo, go to banjowarehouse.com. You can call Andy at 404-372-5482. And you can also see more pictures of uh, all the different banjos we have, which is over 70. So if you want to come visit us, just give us a call a day in advance. And of course, it's Christmas. And so a lot of the more desirable, more rare banjos are selling quickly. And, and this, of course, is the first video of this one, so it may go real quick. That's it. So if you have any questions, uh, give us a call, and uh, we'd love to see you.